Coming up on Global Business, the first batch of exhibits arrived in Shanghai on Monday for the upcoming 6th China International Import Expo. Chinese Premier Li Qiang set to participate in the SCO Heads of Government meeting in Kyrgyzstan and embark on his inaugural visit. California Governor Gavin Newsom's week-long trip to China to focus on enhancement of climate change cooperation. From CGTN headquarters here in Beijing, this is Global Business. I'm Michelle Vandenberg. Our top story this year marks the 70th anniversary of the founding of the All-China Federation of Industry and Commerce, an organization bridging the government and the private sector. In his congratulatory letter to the organization, President Xi Jinping praised the Federation's contributions in pushing forward China's opening up over the past seven decades. He called on the Federation to double down on efforts for the healthy development of China's private sector. Meanwhile, he expressed the hope that people working for the private economy can fully implement the new development philosophy, uphold their entrepreneurship, and make more contributions to China's modernization drive. A ceremony to mark the occasion was held in Beijing. Established in 1953, the Federation has been assisting the government in managing and serving the private economy. It is also an important part of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference. On Tuesday, China's Public Security Department released additional information on the initiatives implemented to enhance high-quality development in the country over the past year. Our Lu Surei has more. During a press conference in Beijing on safeguarding public safety to ensure high-quality development, Vice Minister of Public Security Wang Zhizhong summarized and reported the work of the department. Uh, in the past year, a five-year plan has been devised for inspection work ensuring the will of the party is implemented throughout the department. And efficiency and performance have also been improved by upgrading and digitalizing the uh, department's operation system. To help maintain social stability, Wang said the department has broken up more than 1,000 criminal groups and cracked down on nearly 700,000 criminal cases involving telecom communications and huge economic losses have also been saved with the department's efforts and from January to uh, September it has tackled more than 110,000 economic crimes saving 18 billion yuan or more than 2.4 billion US dollars it has also strengthened measures to prevent traffic accidents with the number decreasing by almost 10 percent from last year and the death toll dropping by almost 22 percent and the minister also emphasized the measures taken to facilitate the high-quality development of the Yangtze River area with a crackdown on legal fishing and sand extraction activities. Since 2020, the department has investigated more than 20,000 illegal fishing cases and detained more than 3,000 illegal fishing boats. On Monday, the first batch of exhibits for the 6th China International Import Expo entered the exhibition hall. Among them were the world's first photon counting CT machine, Spectrum Digital PET MR, and a new generation of heavy off-road recreational vehicles. A ceremony as well as welcoming activities were held at the Shanghai National Convention and Exhibition Center. Yeah, actually, we show it for the very first time in China. Yeah, and uh, this is linked to the idea of CIE, because CIE for me it's not just only an exhibition, um, it's a platform to talk and especially to listen. And so last year we already started presenting a recreational vehicle based on an AROX and we received really good feedback on that. And that's why I'm pretty happy that we now show it together with Yutong as one of our bodybuilders that AROX on a, based on a recreational vehicle um, now in CIE this year. And today we uh, bring the first um, uh, our showcasing product, the new generation of PET MR, um, to join the CIE. This year we will showcase more than 30 products to CIE, and the PET MR is one of the most important precision house equipment. Uh, so we are glad to bring the latest technology to benefit more Chinese people. 
过去的整整六年，我们每年都来参加。We've participated in every expo in the past six years, and we feel that the CIIE really increased the pace for innovation commercialization. For example, we showcased the photon counting CT technology at CIIE in 2021, and a model machine in 2022. Then we received approval from the FDA through the Green Channel, which took only half the usual time. So we are very impressed by speed of China. The EU fair has become a catalyst for EU's thriving export engine, with the city's exports experiencing a significant surge of over 16% in the first seven months of this year. These exports account for approximately 14% of Zhejiang Province's total exports, indicating the significant role EU plays in the region's trade landscape. Our reporter Zhang Shixuan explored the bustling marketplace to uncover the immense trade opportunities created by these small commodities. This scene is repeated everywhere around here. A buyer, usually from outside China, asking about small commodities, all made in China. This is the world's largest distribution center for small commodities. The EU international trade market. You are done. You saw lights, locks, clothes, and shoes. There are many things. I come to look around when my clients ask me about specific products. The most frequently asked question is, of course, how much? How much? How much? So price competition is fierce. I used to buy from agents in Morocco. It's better directly purchasing in China. They are cheaper here. Algeria product number one. Oh, price good. The high density and large volume of different products here have made this market a magnet for buyers, gathering together 75,000 booths and 2.1 million different products. But the growing loyalty of the customers, as well as the increasing number of regular customers of the brands here, tell another story. It's been 16 years. I come every day. Every day, there are products sent to my warehouse. I buy around 200 containers of goods a year. I first came to China in 2002. My clients, mostly from the construction industry, only want tools from this brand. I buy 10 to 15 containers of goods. It's my second time ordering goods in China. This brand sells really well in Morocco. It's good quality. I buy 10 to 15 containers of goods every year, each worth around 1 million yuan. From now on, I will come to China two or three times every year. The city now hosts more than 15,000 foreign merchants from more than 100 countries and regions. The thing that has secured a long-term business relationship is the quality and the reputation Chinese brands have gained in emerging markets. This local hardware toolmaker this year has seen a significant increase in orders from African countries, including Congo, Liberia, Kenya, Ghana, Morocco, and Algeria, all Belt and Road member countries. Orders from Russia have risen seven or eight times compared to last year. They are too much close to China.、Uh, Chinese help them a lot in their countries. They build the construction, the bridge. And they bring the fast train to there, and they make a lot of jobs for their local people. So they prefer to accept the Chinese brand. This is good for business because of the material stable. For the rate for the dollar is they are keeping 7.0 and 7.3. So it's good for export. Now everybody know about the inflation is very much to a lot of developed countries. So they don't have much money in the pocket, and now they want to save the money. To benefit more exporters. The EU-China Commodity City has announced its new strategy to develop overseas. One of the latest moves has been the establishment of its first overseas sub-market in Dubai. It will mainly sell products in hardware, construction, and new energy sectors. The market only opened last year, and already almost 60% of the booths have been rented out. Entering into Dubai means we will gain a market of 1.5 billion people covering the Middle East and North Africa. The project is next to the Jebel Ali Free Trade Zone, so that we can take advantage of the port to trade small commodities.
With the overseas strategy we launched this year, we will apply different modes based on different markets and the trade characteristics of the merchants. EU has built its export market and global reputation on a mountain of small everyday products. The city's sales volumes are now a bellwether for global economic trends, and it's paved the way for an overseas expansion. Zhang Shixuan, ICS for CGTN, EU, Zhejiang Province. To China's latest economic data, China's fiscal revenue surged in the first three quarters of this year, with official data revealing an impressive 8.9 percent yearly growth, surpassing 16 trillion yuan. Analysts say the revenue growth aligns with the broader economic recovery and is approaching 77 percent of the total budget target. Simultaneously, fiscal expenditure saw a 3.9 percent year-on-year increase, reaching nearly 20 trillion yuan over the first nine months of this year. This boost in expenditure effectively supported and secured the vital aspects of economic and social development. To some other business headlines from China, efforts to advance the high-quality development of the outdoor sports sector and stimulate related consumption are being intensified by China, the National Development and Reform Commission said on Tuesday. The outdoor sports industry in the country is poised to reach a total market value of 3 trillion yuan by the end of 2025. China said on Tuesday that it will approve 1 trillion yuan in additional sovereign debt issuance in the fourth quarter. The funds are aimed at supporting the post-disaster reconstruction recovery. China is also committed to enhancing global cooperation in the distant water fisheries industry, with its aquaculture production contributing to about 40% of the global total, as per a white paper from the State Council Information Office. China Media Group and a number of French media organizations have held a ceremony in Paris to mark the launch of a joint production project. Six Sino-French co-production film and television projects were released in the ceremony on Tuesday. This include a documentary based on the life of Jean Jerome Austin Basseret, a French doctor who spent almost 40 years in China during the last century. The joint project comes as China and France are set to celebrate 60 years of diplomatic relations next year. You're watching Global Business, still to come. Chinese Premier Li Chang set to participate in the SCO Heads of Government meeting in Kyrgyzstan and embark on his inaugural visit to the country. Join us in San Francisco on November 14th through 16th for the most influential meeting of the world's leaders and business executives in the Asia Pacific. The Apex CEO Summit 2023 will focus on creating economic opportunity. The summit will promote sustainability, inclusion, resilience, and innovation across the Asia Pacific. Don't miss your chance to be part of the conversation. Request your invitation at apexceosummit2023.com. Chinese Premier Li Qiang is set to participate in the 22nd meeting of the Council for the Heads of Government of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization member states in Kyrgyzstan. It will also be his inaugural visit to the Kyrgyz Republic. Over the past 31 years since the establishment of diplomatic ties between the two nations, China and Kyrgyzstan have seen continuous development in their bilateral relations. 2022, China-Kyrgyzstan trade reached a historic peak, totaling 15.5 billion U.S. dollars, marking an impressive year-on-year -year increase of almost 106 percent. During the first quarter of this year, China's investment in Kyrgyzstan exceeded $29 million, making it Kyrgyzstan's second-largest source of investment. In its 20 years of existence, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization has seen its membership expand. It's now become the world's largest regional organization in terms of geographic coverage and population. Our reporter Yu Yang takes a look at the development of the platform, as well as China's role in promoting cooperation among its member states. The Shanghai Cooperation Organization is a permanent intergovernmental organization. 
It has become the world's largest regional organization in terms of geographic coverage and population, with the member states home to over 40 percent of the world's population, together contributing around 25 percent to global GDP. Preceded by the Shanghai Five Mechanism, the SCO was founded in Shanghai by China, Russia and Kazakhstan, among other members over 20 years ago. And last September, at the SCO summit, Bahrain, the Maldives and the United Arab Emirates, Kuwait and Myanmar were approved as new dialogue partners. Since its establishment, the CSO has deepened cooperation on law enforcement and security and created a stable and safe environment for development. It has made trade and investment more convenient, boosted regional economic recovery and strengthened interconnectivity. Fueled by the so-called Shanghai spirit, the SCO has been a crucial platform for stakeholders to strengthen security cooperation in the fight against the terrorism, separatism and extremism. As of 2021, the foreign trade volume of the SCO reached 6.6 trillion US dollars, an increase of 100 times compared with 20 years ago. The Shanghai spirit that member states uphold share similarities with China's understanding of development and global governance. It highlights developing countries' pursuit of common development, which has become increasingly important in the current international environment amid hegemony and as more countries are choosing multilateralism and peaceful development. Experts say China has played an important role in facilitating economic and trade cooperation through the SCO. For example, loans totally 14.6 billion US dollars have been granted to member banks and partner banks up until last August for infrastructure, green development and agriculture. China has played a leading role in the development of the SCO. First, the birthplace of the organization is the Chinese city of Shanghai. And over the past two decades, China has contributed its governance ideas towards the evolution of the CSO. Meanwhile, China has set up a number of cooperative projects with other member states in the fields of economy, agriculture, and people-to-people -people exchanges. Experts say no matter how the SCO develops in the next decades, the Shanghai spirit will always remain as its core value, emphasizing mutual trust, equality and pursuits of common development. It provides a cooperative platform for consultations, which allows both smaller and bigger members to work together on their national interests. Yu Yang, CGTN, Beijing. Now for more insights on Premier Li's upcoming visit to Kyrgyzstan and the key areas of discussions for the leaders, we're joined by Wang Yiwei, professor at the School of International Relations of the Remy University of China. So Professor Wang, what are the primary topics that are anticipated to be discussed during this visit? Well, the head of the uh, government uh, uh, meeting of the SCO the main duties is to uh, implement the summit uh, decisions and also implement the strategies, uh, for instance, the 2025, and also uh, talk about the budget spending and econ economic development and uh, some uh, substantial cooperation programs. How to the, uh, make a progress? So this time, uh, because of the world uh, economy suffered, by the Middle East uh, crisis and uh, many, uh, you know, the BRICS also talk about the de-dollarization. So it's a more focus on the financial and economic cooperation. And uh, because also after the third uh, BRI summit, the hosting country, Kyrgyzstan, they also talk about China, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan's uh, railway, and even extend to uh, the West, so-called the cross the uh, Caspian Seas uh, corridors and then extend to maybe in the future to Europe. So more talk about uh, uh, economic corridors and uh, uh, ec economic development. Yeah. Um, can you outline any specific outcomes or results that might be uh, sought after from these discussions? Well, so far, it's uh, uh, difficult to predict because of the, from India side, not set, uh, the uh, delegation yet at uh, the beginning. So what kind of uh, levels of the uh, India's participation the top part of because we have the new members from the Benelux and, and also the nine countries. So how do the synergies of the different countries, the strategies, maybe also focus on the debts, focus on the e-commerce, mm -hmm. focus on, so we say, de-dollarization of the 
uh, uh, economic corridors and the infrastructure building. I think basically that's the uh, major topic. Yeah. What about some of the outcomes that achieved during the previous year's uh, the SEO meeting? Well, last year is uh, still uh, during the COVID period, it's an uh, online meeting. So they reached uh, some consensus uh, about uh, the stable of the global supply chain, particularly among the SEO members. They talk about depth, they talk about uh, the mutual assistance under uh, the COVID and the medical and equipment equipments. And also talk about uh, the uh, economic development to deal with the COVID. So this time, I think it's more talk about, uh, we say, high level as a development of the China and Europe Express and economic collaboration. All right. Thank you so much for your insights. Really appreciate your time. Wang Yiwei, professor at the School of International Relations of the Renmin University of China. The governor of U.S. state of California, Gavin Newsom, is in the Tai hub of Shenzhen, the second stop of a week-long visit to China. Our reporter Cao Chufeng has more from Shenzhen. Now, Shenzhen is the first major city around the world to have uh, an all-electric bus fleet and taxi fleet. Um, Newsom, when he was here, he looked through all the uh, electric buses. He looked at the charging poles. He even took a test drive of some of the Chinese-produced electric vehicles that was bought to this depot. Now, in an interview with us, um, the governor said that uh, even though they have similar kinds of vehicles back in uh, California, but they are not in this big scale. So he was very impressed. Actually, uh, visiting um, Shenzhen and also get to know more about the clean uh, energy uh, public transportation system might be useful for Newsom. Um, even though California is historically known as uh, uh, the biggest oil producer of the United States. Newsom is actually pushing quite hard and very committed to phase out fossil fuels. He even made a comment during a UN public meeting saying that the climate crisis is actually a fossil fuel crisis. And China and California have a long history in collaboration across various sectors, including on tackling climate change. Uh, Newsom's predecessors also signed multiple MOUs with China. And uh, Newsom's visit to China this time is also considered as a crucial trip that will help reinforce this partnership and collaboration. Tourism and cultural ties are also high on the agenda of California Governor Gavin Newsom's China trip. Caroline Batetta is the president and CEO of Visit California, an industry-led organization that promotes tourism in the state. In an interview with my colleague Zhong Shi, Viteta said she hopes the trip will bring more Chinese tourists to the states. Why don't we start with Governor Gavin Newsom's trip to China? Uh, part of this visit is about promoting tourism and economic development. What do you expect will be accomplished with the governor's visit? We're really excited and appreciate the governor uh, and his willingness to visit. We we really hope that it just continues to uh, foster a spirit of cooperation and more, more exchange, uh, eventually, uh, hopefully leading to more Chinese visitors uh, coming to California. But because of the pandemic, many Chinese tourists had difficulty traveling abroad. Uh, Carolyn, how important is the Chinese market for California's tourism industry as you map out your marketing strategy for the coming years? China is absolutely paramount in terms of our global market and the strategy. It's our number one market that we have. Pre-pandemic, Chinese visitors spent $4 billion in market. We had about one and a half million visitors, more share and volume than any other state in the United States. So that that's what we're looking to and uh, really trying to overcome some of the challenges we have today with airline lift, for example. I mean, you've had experience with restoring tourism after major natural and economic crises. What remains to be done post COVID? Um, how do we speed up recovery efforts at this point? 
Well, it's critical and that's part of the governor's visit that, that our respective departments of transportation continue to talk to this day. We actually only share 15% of the lift that we had prior to the pandemic, Lyft being airline seats and capacity to bring those Chinese visitors over to experience the joys of California. So that's first and foremost, is to have a place for them and a vehicle for them to visit. And then with regard to you know future, we, we've been investing in the market for 15 years. The Chinese market, they're, they've become dear friends obviously business partners, but that foundation is already laid. We're, we're actually planning on spending about $7.2 million this year. And as a matter of fact, we were the first state to bring over a delegation of tourism executives that we did in August, both to Beijing and Shanghai. Now to some other business news from around the world. Eurozone business activity showed a sluggish performance this month with the Composite Purchasing Managers Index at 46.5 in October. Demand declined across the continent, raising concerns of a possible recession. In the UK, the PMI for October hit a new low since January, standing at 49.2, down from 49.3 in September. This underscores recession risks as the Bank of England prepares for an upcoming interest rate decision. Turning to Asia, Thailand experienced an unexpected consecutive rise in exports for September despite weak global demand. The country's exports increased by 4.9% from August 2023, marking the first year-on-year -year increase in 11 months. And that will do it with this edition of Global Business here on CGTN. I'm Jia Vandenberg in Beijing. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.